Hey there, everybody. This is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Once again, I find myself having to apologize for taking so long to uh, get some of these shot, but my schedule has just, I've been on the road so much, it's been completely crazy. So for all of you that have continued to write, even though I just hardly get to answer these, I want you to know how much I appreciate it. And hopefully over the next several days, I'll be able to shoot a variety of these. Uh, I've set aside some time. So Hopefully I can shoot as many as I can. We're going into my website and clearing all of the questions out. So now when you submit them, yours will be at the top of the list. If you have a question and you want to ask, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com. Clom. Dinosaurgeorge.com. It's been a while since I've recorded. Go to dinosaurgeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, and it'll bring up a form, and you can submit your question. All right, this particular episode, uh, the highlighted item for this one is a monster. It is the claw of a Therizinosaurus. Now, this is not molded off of a real claw. This is a sculpted piece that is based on a real claw. So what you're seeing is a good representation of what some of the claws look like. Now... There were bigger claws than this. Therizinosaurus has some monster claws. But this is a really cool piece because it's very affordable. It's awesome because it's big and it makes a good piece. If you go to my website, uh, it is item 3041. It sells for, I think, $38. So it's, uh, it's expensive, but this is a big claw and it's really cool if you want something neat for your collection. So that's it. All right, now let's get to why you are all here and that is to answer your questions. So let's get started. This first question is for Alex from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Alex is a good friend of mine. He's one of my friends on Facebook. And by the way, you can go to Facebook. Uh, you can't friend me, unfortunately, because I've reached the maximum they'll allow me to have. But you can follow my Facebook posts. Um, that you want to find uh, George Blassing, B-L-A-S-I-N-G. It's not under Dinosaur George. I do have a Dinosaur George fan page, but I just don't have the time to do anything with it. But I do post on the uh, George Blassing page. So here we go. I have a question. If non-avian dinosaurs were still around today, how would they change and adapt to our environment and climate? Alex, this is a great question, buddy. Now, for some of you that may not understand what non-avian dinosaurs are, that's basically the dinosaurs that weren't birds because paleontologists uh, recognize living birds as avian dinosaurs. The non-avian dinosaurs would be the things like the sauropods and the hadrosaurs and, and the theropods who didn't have feathers and couldn't fly. So uh, one of the problems with this, Alex, is that uh, there are so many things that can impact something like this. Uh, so many variables. Climate change, of course, is one of them. Environmental change impacts all life. So let's just assume that they were still around. How would they change and how would they adapt? Well, our environments today have a greater swing in seasons. And that's something dinosaurs would have to become used to because during the Mesozoic, the, sw the swings in climate weren't that dramatic. Winters were not as harsh in most places, and summers may not have been as hot as they are in some areas. So I suspect that you would see not so much the development of more feathers. In my opinion, I think you would see development of fur. I think that fur would be more likely because it's a better insulating material for big animals. Big, huge animals, feathers probably wouldn't be as efficient as say fur. So I suspect you might see more furry dinosaurs, if that makes sense. Now, when I say fur, I don't necessarily mean hair. I mean the keratin that hair is made of and same thing feathers are made of. I think that rather than things that we would identify as feathers, I think they would be, maybe fuzz is a better word. Um, I don't think they would have been as large as they were back then because the oxygen percentage is, is lower now than it was during their time. So if they survived, I think dinosaurs would have become much smaller and maybe would have had some furry dinosaurs running around. Anyway, Alex, good to hear from you, buddy. And as I promised you, you would be the first person I answer. All right, Hugo from Zolin, Gelderland in the Netherlands. Wow, that's a long title, Mr. Hugo. Welcome back, DG. Hugo, good to be back, my friend, and I'm glad that you wrote to me. Hugo says, we all know Jack Horner believes T-Rex was a scavenger, and he used this evidence to support his opinion. He said T-Rex had bone-crushing teeth, a great sense of smell, poor eyesight, it couldn't run, and the powerful bite force is not associated with predators, but with scavengers. I respect that he has a different opinion. 
but the evidence he used to support his belief, in my opinion, doesn't hold up. But I would like to hear your opinion on this, DG. Thank you, and keep making these videos, buddy. Okay, Hugo, let me tell you what I really like about this question. The fact that you said, I respect, I respect him, but I have a different opinion. Brother, that is what true science is about. It's not getting mad, it's not arguing, it's not fighting over who's right or wrong. You can be respectful of a person's opinion even though you don't agree with it. And I am so proud of you, Hugo, for demonstrating that. Okay, Jack Horner is wrong. He's totally wrong and I'm infuriated that, I'm kidding you. <laughs> I believe Jack Horner has come back and restated some things about that opinion. I've heard different things, I've never heard it from him. I don't know if he necessarily feels the same way or not as strongly as he once did. I don't know, but though those are just rumors that I've heard. They don't, they may not be right or wrong, but let's get to the facts. From what I see, based on things like its eyesight, based on some of the evidence that's been recent evidence, like CAT scanning of the brains and looking at the way the brain shape is and determining what part of the brain is used for what sense, I believe everything points to the fact that this animal is a predator. He's an absolute predator. As for speed, yeah, he's big and he may not have been fast, but think about this. If you are hunting with a friend, speed is not the issue anymore because ambushes don't require speed. It requires chasing you to where my buddy is waiting and my buddy doesn't have to chase you down. He just has to step out of where he's hiding from and hit you once and knock you down because T-Rex is big. So speed may not have been that big of an issue to them. As for the sense of smell, if you have an, if you're hunting something, or if you're living on things that are already dead, you want to be able to smell them from a tremendous distance. But T Rex can't travel tremendous distances to find food. He's simply too giant. You burn too many calories going to find something that has died. And keep in mind, when something dies, the calorie count, the caloric count of the meat begins to drop as it rots. So it takes more rotted meat to get the same calories and benefits of healthy meat. So he would require him to be able to smell unbelievable distances, which I don't think is necessary. Plus he would have to be able to travel unbelievable distances in the hope of finding something dead and then getting there before it's so rotted and decayed it doesn't have any value anymore. Finally, recurved teeth only serve one purpose in the, in the animal kingdom, and that is to hold on to something that is attempting to get away. If you're hunting things that are dead, why would you want teeth that are curved backwards? And then finally, eyesight. Its eyes have been rotated forward to the very front of its skull so it can look straight down its nose and judge distance and depth. That is the sign of an animal that is trying to catch something that doesn't want to get caught. If your eyesight has been moved all the way to the front, it wouldn't make any sense that that advanced eyesight is used to find something that's dead. So I believe that everything points to Tyrannosaurus rex being a very active and dangerous predator. And I disagree if uh, Dr. Horner still has that opinion, I disagree with him. But that doesn't mean Dr. Horner is wrong and I'm right. That's just my opinion. I respect that man and he's done a tremendous amount for paleontology. So good for him, but good for you, Hugo, for having such good manners, buddy. All right. Christian from Middletown, New Jersey. Hi, George. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I am, Christian, and I hope you are too. Uh, my question is, if Tyrannosaurus rex was around during the Triassic and Jurassic period rather than the late Cretaceous, would we see the Tyrannosaurs being more evolved or more heavenly built or like, uh, or like Giganotosaurus? I hope you can answer my question and I wish the best of luck. Uh, and more years in the paleontology field. Wow, Christian, what a nice way to end your question. What a compliment. Okay, um, if T-Rex was around during the, uh, let's say the uh, Jurassic, Triassic, he would have been tiny because really we're starting to see dinosaurs begin to emerge in the Triassic. So let's look at the Jurassic. There was big dinosaurs in, in Jurassic. If T-Rex, as advanced as he was, lived there, lived then, first of all, I believe he might have eaten himself out of existence because he was so much more advanced, or she was so much more advanced than predators of that time that I don't know if the herbivores would have been able to adapt to him or to it because it would have been 
outclass it would have outclassed everybody else. So if he was around then um, and he had the in intellect or he had the the advancements that intellect isn't a good word. He had the advancements he had in the late Cretaceous. If he had those in the Jurassic, who knows what would have been what it would have been like by the end of the Cretaceous. It might have been an absolute super predator that probably would have gotten smaller because it wouldn't have needed its massive size because this would have been gigantic. So I think you would have seen an incredibly, incredibly dangerous dinosaur had Tyrannosaurus been in the Jurassic and then ultimately evolved by the end of the Cretaceous. It's an interesting question. It would be a terrifying thing. T-Rex is a terrifying dinosaur on his own. If he would have had more time to evolve, I think intellect would have been one of the things that would have gotten better. But I don't know if he would have been as heavy. I think he would have gotten smaller because I think brain power trumps brawn, and I don't think carrying around that massive weight would have been that advantageous for him. All right, Adam. Wow, Adam. From Sharm El Sheikh, South Sinai, Egypt. Boy, I hope I got all that right, brother. <laughs> Hi, Dinosaur George, or can I call you Dr. Blasing? Okay, Adam, I'm not a doctor. Didn't get my degree in paleontology, so don't ever call me doctor. Uh, but you can call me George, you can call me DG, you can call me Dinosaur George, you can call me anything you want, my friend. Um, or, or I'll call you DG, that's good. Uh, anyway, I always try to make my questions short, and I hope this one is short enough. Adam says that because one of the recommendations I have is to make your questions short and to the point. Sometimes I get these incredibly long questions and the people that go through these to pull out randomly those that they send me by email to say, hey, here's some to answer, they will not send me one that's long because they know I simply cannot read a question that's a page long. So when you submit a question, sort of make it short and to the point. You don't have to make it one sentence, but make it short and to the point. So good for you, Adam. Okay. When dinosaurs became extinct, is it true that the creatures that survived the mass extinction actually know themselves what the mass extinction was like? Um, I, that's it. I hope you have a good time answering my question, and I hope you don't have a hard time answering my question because of, my, um, because of our language differences. And finally, my favorite dinosaur in the world is Truodon formosus. Uh, he's an Arctic Truodon. I love Truodon. I think he's cool. Or Troodon, depends on how you pronounce it. Okay. So... Is it true that the animals that would have, that survived the mass extinction knew? Well, yes, uh, Adam, they were there. They would have certainly been fully aware of whatever happened was happening. They would have known this stuff. They would have known that their environment changed. Now, would it be something that they would think about the next day? Probably not, because animals during that time weren't like that. They weren't that advanced. So to me, it simply would have been that when they wake up this morning, it's either much hotter than it was the day before or much colder, which depending on whatever occurred, and they simply would have adapted to it. But I don't think they would have given it much thought. I think they simply would have, they, they simply would have known something big happened um, and it, the world is a different place than it was before, but I don't think they would have thought about it. All right, finally, Samuel uh, from Zebug, Malta. Dear DG, I hope you're fine. I am Samuel. I hope you are too. I'm your biggest Maltese fan. Well, that is so cool, Samuel. That's very cool. I have two questions. Firstly, I was wondering whether we humans are related to apes that lived in the Miocene period, such as Gigantopithecus. My opinion about this fact is that we humans could be related to Gigantopithecus. Gigantopithecus could have grown smaller and evolved to cope with changes in the environment. Okay, first of all, Gigantopithecus was a giant ape. This thing is huge, very, very big. I've heard a lot of debate whether it was an ape or whether it was more closely related to orangutans. I, I, I don't study enough of that to know who he's related to. But I did see information that said that early humans lived alongside of Gigantopithecus. There was a time where there was a crossover so that early humans and Gigantopithecus lived together. And if that's the case, then Gigantopithecus would not have evolved and become smaller and become human because humans are already there alongside of it. Uh, now, again, I, I just briefly read that, and I don't know if that's the fact or not, but I'm pretty sure I read that, that it appears that Gigantopithecus, who appeared in the Miocene, existed all the way into the Pliocene or Pleistocene, Pleistocene, I guess, and that humans lived alongside of it. So I don't think we evolved from him. I think they were two different animals that shared common characteristics in an earlier ancestor. Um, okay, my second question is whether dinosaurs could have shed their skin like modern-day snakes and other forms of reptiles. Ooh. 
I believe that dinosaurs did shed their skin since they are related to reptiles. P.S. I really love your videos. They're so informative, interested, and funny. Your number one fan, Samuel. Samuel, what a nice thing to say. Thank you. I'm glad you guys like these. Uh, I, I'm glad, and I always say guys, keep in mind, there are so many young ladies that, that follow me, and this, this is not about a guy thing. I just say guys out of habit. Guys means you. There's so many guys out there that like the, the videos, and I appreciate it. I wish I had time to do more. All right, could they shed their skin? Well, my friend, I do not know the answer to that. I can't tell you. Now, for those that appeared to have feathers, uh, and that did have feathers, the theropods, no way. I don't think they would have been able to shed their skin because feathers aren't something that can be shed. Now, there are birds that lose their feathers during a molting season, but those feathers grow back again. So I don't think theropods would have. And it looks like animals like uh, Cetacosaurus, who had that, those uh, bristly things on the end of its tail. I think that leans more towards dinosaurs not shedding their skin like reptiles. Because really, in the animal kingdom, reptiles, even though dinosaurs have a relationship, they're not that dramatically closely related when it comes to skeletal design. And since the skeletal design is different, the, the possibility is that their behavior and everything about them was different as well. That's my guess. That's my guess. So Samuel, I, I cannot answer your question with absolute certainty. But it is a very interesting question. I don't think anybody's ever asked me that, and I don't think I've ever thought about that. Boy, what a, what a thing that would be, huh? To see something like a hadrosaur rubbing up against a tree to get that loose skin off and how shiny and new they would have looked. They would have been ideal because that way Tyrannosaurus would have eaten something that looked beautiful on top of um, being good for, his, uh, good for his diet. All right. <laughs> I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Like I said, I'm going to try to shoot as many of these as I can. So go to my website, start sending your questions in. I'll try to answer them when I can. I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you all for watching. I'll be back shortly with another video.